Welcome to Love Where You Live, Boulder County. This is a podcast where we have conversations about why it's awesome to live in Boulder County, sometimes the not so awesome. But today I'm super, super excited, very excited uh, to introduce our next guest who goes by the name of Rennie, for those of you that just want to hear the nickname, uh, more formally known as Marinda Carfrey originally from Australia. And I'm going to give an introduction as you, some of you are looking at her on YouTube. Others don't know, and maybe others aren't following the sport of triathlon. But if you're following the sport of triathlon, you know that she's a three-time Hawaii Ironman winner. You also know she won the 70.3 World Championship and a whole host of other races. Um, but also beyond all of that, where I like to kind of call her into the show is she's a mom of three. Uh, she's got a pretty cool husband, uh, that we'll call Tim, T.O. And then she's got these gorgeous three children and she's now removed from the sport, uh, but she lives here in Boulder, Colorado. And I couldn't be more excited to hear more about the story from her about how she moved to Boulder. So instead of saying her, I'll say you, Rini, thank you so much for coming on the show with us. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's a treat. We, um, I think I asked you to come by saying we invite people that we love and that live in Boulder and you're one of those. Amanda sends her regrets. She was so excited when I told her you were coming. Um, and so, uh, Again, she says hi, and sorry she's not here. Um, but let's do this. I want to I want to kind of dive way back, and I want to say, folks that are either triathlon fans or not, they're listening to the show about Boulder, and they're like, "Who is this Aussie, and why is she here?" Tell us about young Marinda Carfrey back in Australia, Brisbane, I think, something like that. Tell yeah. us about what it was like growing up to be you. Yeah, so I you know grew up in Australia, um, in Brisbane, and you know one of six kids, grew up on a farm. Uh, found triathlon or sort of stumbled across triathlon when I was about 18. I played basketball, believe it or not. Sitting down, you can't tell, but I'm quite short. I'm only 5'3". Um, but my love, first love in the sporting world was basketball. Um, I was quite literally overlooked for some big teams. And I was sort of getting sick of, you know, outworking everyone but not really making the teams and so forth because of my stature. And I, I think I was a little, oh, uh, how I want to say, um, uh, self-conscious or not as, um, um, standouty or showy as some of the other women either. So, um, I think that definitely played a role in why I wasn't, um, progressed forward in basketball. Anyway, met some triathletes in the gym, was trying to get ready for the upcoming basketball season, like getting a little stronger in the gym, lifting big weights and met some triathletes, um, some triathletes. Yeah. And, I was sort of blown away. Like even though triathlon at that point, this is around 99, uh, 98, 99, and Australia was like the greatest nation in the sport. I think that year the women went top five out of, you know, I think it went one, two, three, four, and six in the world yes. championships, um, the ITU distance. Uh, nonetheless, I had no idea um, and was just really intrigued. Um, fast forward a few months later, you know, we're, we're in the gym working out with the triathletes and then the, the coach said, you know, do you want to start doing some running training as well? And so we did that. And then one day he was watching watching us run and he said, hey, you have a really nice running style. Have you ever thought of doing triathlon? And that was sort of my little push because I was in my mind like I'd love to do this, but I'd never, I'd never have the confidence, you know, like I would right. never have just – gone and done it but he said I think you know you could be a good triathlete you want to try it and I was like absolutely 100% wow. and so long story short um, I started you know, racing triathlons I made the Australian team by 2001 uh, which is pretty incredible in my mind given that I'd played basketball for about 11 years and I'd made state teams and sat on the bench m most of the time and I was playing in state league and I was mostly on the bench um, in the open women's division too uh, so Pretty crazy um, that, you know, I did my first triathlon in 99. By 2001, I was on the Australian team, and that was just mind-blowing for me. Like, all of a sudden, I'm traveling internationally, never been overseas before, um, getting to race for my country. Yes, I didn't race so super well in that first World Champs, but it was just a massive, um, you know, from doing triathlon, doing a triathlon, learning about the sport to being on the Australian team and Fast forward to why I'm here in Boulder in, um, that was around 2001. Um, so, f you know, kept racing triathlons, kept getting better. And then by 05, I was sort of learning about racing opportunities in the U S and long course racing and non-drafting events. And I wasn't the greatest swimmer given that I didn't grow up swimming. Um, but I was pr quite strong on the bike and, and quite good on the run. So non-drafting was more a natural fit for me. So in, uh, 2005, I 
came over to the US to do a couple of half Ironman events and Loretta Harrop was training here with Siri Lindley at the time and Loretta's also from Brisbane and she said, hey, come up and train with us in Boulder for a month. And so I came up to Boulder and um, Matt and Kelly Reed, who are triathletes that lived here That's once right. upon a time, um, said, yeah, 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 we have space in our room, in our house. And so I turned up on their doorstep and they're like, yeah, we don't have room for you, basically. You can stay for a couple of nights, but I'm going to I'm gonna find another space for you. So they basically walked down the street and I ended up living with uh, Brian and Holly, yes. um, Brian Opansky and Holly Beggs, um, who lived just a few de- doors down. And that ended up being just the perfect scenario. Like they didn't know much about, I mean, they knew about triathlon, of course, and Holly had done a few, but they had not- knew nothing about me. They'd never hosted anyone before. And they're like, well, we don't have a bed for her. And I think Matt, Matt and Kelly put a mattress <laughs> in their basement um, on the floor and there, there was a bedroom down there. And um, that's where I ended up staying that month. And then the next year I came back for three months and started working with Siri Lindley you know, as yes. my, my coach. Um, and she was based here. And then three months came to five months, came to nine months, you know, year after year. And then soon enough, I'm living here. And with that, I'd like to conclude the podcast. No, that's, <laughs> no it's amazing. So you got, I love it. You, you, um, I, I want to just backtrack a little bit. So you're, you're still new, but you're doing very well. The confidence is growing because you said you wouldn't have had the confidence to do triathlon. That's fascinating. You didn't have the confidence maybe in your basketball, but where do you find the confidence now at, in 2005 to go to the U S and ju- also kind of turn over a new leaf long course different to short course. How'd you make that leap? Yeah. So my first international trip trip was 2001 and we went and raced up in uh, Canada. Edmonton. Edmonton was that world champs. And We spent a little bit of time in, I think, Portland or around that area with the Australian team before that. Uh, So that was my first time in the US. Uh, And then we, as an Australian team, or I guess the Australian Institute of Sport um, funded the junior program, which is what I was a part of, to go and have a training camp in France. So 2002, three, four, I went over to France for two or three months and trained over there and got experience racing internationally. But again, you know, I had some okay results in short course racing, but I I just needed to make some money. Yeah. I think that was the big thing. Like, you know, I could, you know, possibly come and race in the US in non-drafting um, and, you know, actually take home a little bit of money at the gotcha. end of the year instead of going home and then having zero dollars. I mean, and honestly, I wouldn't have been able to travel without the support of the Australian right. um, Institute of Sport. So that gave me like invaluable experience traveling um, and you know, non-English speaking countries too. So there was a massive learning curve just to how to live, how to train um, and survive um, just in those, those years um, and having the support of the Australian team and and other athletes are all kind of all traveling together. So that was helpful. But yeah, I think it was just, I actually in 2004 as well, I did um, the long course and it wasn't, it wasn't world champs that ITU World Championship long distance race had been in Nice a few years, but then randomly in 2004, it was just a long course event. And I heard that it was going to be 20,000 euro for first. And that for me was like, okay, I'm going to try and win that because that was like a fortune um, back then. Um, So that was sort of, I tagged that on to the end of my ITU season. I think it was maybe July, August, September. I don't actually even know, maybe August, September time. And I went and raced that and I won. Um, and that was non-drafting. And I was That's on my good. road bike. I mean, that, of course, lends itself to a road sure. bike and the rest of it. But, yeah, my first – then I was like, okay, I, I can do this. I know I'm good at okay. – So it was almost like the confidence built over time. Like, okay – because, you know, I finished high school and when I started triathlon, I was starting university and it was full time. I was doing a dual degree and, and I was working part time at Bunnings Warehouse, which is like a Home Depot. Um, and so, you know, I was sort of busy and then still playing basketball and then I was starting triathlon. So my life was just like crazy busy, but I was pouring a lot of energy into triathlon. Um, and then the opportunity to travel during the middle part of the year in Australia, we're in school that time of the year. It's not summer holidays like it is here. Our summer holidays are over the Christmas period because that's the middle of our summer. Um, So I kind of had to make a decision um, to stop, you know, my studies and pursue this dream. And so it was sort of like one step at a time. First I went part-time at university and then I was like, okay, I'm just going to defer all my studies and, and go all in. And like every step of the way I'd ask myself, okay, you know, do I have what it takes to be great in this sport and, or not great in this sport, but 
is there enough evidence here to suggest I should continue on this path? And every time the answer was yes, like Fantastic. the results kept coming and, um, and yeah, like my progression as an athlete kept on going. And the next step was yet to come over to the U S and see if I could race, um, well over here as well. Which, which you, which you did. I remember, um, I think, did you do the Baja 70.3? I feel like you won that one. Yeah. That was 06. I 06. Think, yeah. yeah. And that was when I met you. I was like to tell my first story to, with the guest. And that was where we were all heading down from, um, from, uh, San Diego as a group. And, uh, in Sonata was where that Baja 70.3 was. And, and they, they told your story. Oh, here, you know, here's this, you know, sort of like you said, a non-drafting or a drafting athlete. And then you whipped it. But what we really liked, and this is the, the thread was you were just an awesome person. We got to know you, man. And I did in that very briefly, but it was like, wow, what a fun and, and, and uh, just likable, a uh, relatable person. Um, and to me, I'll say that, that, um, that carries over to this day where, uh, where we'll come back to that here. I have a thought, but so now I'm in 2005, you're, you're starting to do the long course. You're doing this. You said you did a quick trip to Boulder and first impressions when you popped into Boulder and you're like, you know, checking out this little town. What'd you think? You know, I think, I'll never forget just coming in off the 36 and seeing the flat irons for the first time. And I didn't know what a flat iron was. I think yeah. it was weeks after I'm like, the, we're going to a flat irons gym. Like, what is this flat irons? Like, yeah. I think I didn't know what that meant until the next year, but I saw the mountains Sure, saw the mountains. and I'm like, yeah, that's beautiful. And then just to get to train here, um, the trails, the, the community, the cycling, it was just like triathlon heaven, really like endurance, yeah. really like as you get to know more endurance sports heaven. And so, yeah, I was just like, there is no other place in the U S like this that I've seen. Um, and prior to that, I was in Santa Barbara with my brother. Okay. Santa Barbara is beautiful, but not as much of a triathlon community. And this just was like, this is where I'm meant to be. And actually my good friends, um, Greg, Greg and Laura Bennett, who used to live here, they made a comment. I, I don't remember when they said this, but they're like, we moved here because everywhere else we've trained in the U S we felt like an anomaly. Like we would go out and exercise and so, and everyone would be like, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> but in Boulder, it's the norm. Like, yes. we feel normal. We that's feel cool. like this is just, you know, what you do here in Boulder. So that's why. And I'm like, yeah, that makes total sense. So I related very well to that. That's well said. I, I'm glad you shared that. And um, certainly I can I can uh, attest to that. You, you fit in uh, sometimes to the point where uh, it's almost weird. You're like, but. I'm kind of good, but you just blend in. You're you're kind of a diamond dozen. It's a nice thing. It's a nice thing. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, just being around so many other, you know, amazing athletes and having the opportunity. I mean, I had the opportunity to train with like Greg and Laura Bennett. I had the opportunity to train with Craig Alexander over the years. Um, uh, yourself, Amanda, you know, tra people that had set their lives up around being the best athletes that they could be. And it was just a, a contagious um, culture. Um and a positive one. And I, I really loved that. And obviously my coach, Siri Lindley, <laughs> don't have yeah. to say too much about her and her um, infectious um, personality and um, her drive to, to win or to, to, you know, leave no stern unturned. So yes, just a what great a, environment. Yeah, fantastic. And a great leader you had. Uh, she, she's, uh, she'd be on the show if we could entice her, if she still lived here, um, but made, made her move to California. As I come back to this, so you're now, you do, when was it you decided that 2006 was when you're staying in Brian and Holly's place? That's your first summer. Was it easy? Was it everything you thought it would be? Was it hard? How was that first exposure for really being here? You know, it was actually wonderful. I started with Siri the end of 05. So um, I left my coach, I think soon after I got home from Australia and then I wasn't planning on training with Siri at all. She ended up reaching out and um, we got on a phone call and I'm like, oh my God, this woman is larger than life and more excited about my career than I think I am. Um, and I just was like, okay, I'm sold. Let's let's um, do this. And so she was based here. And so I had a training group yeah. and that was sort of a family. And also uh, Brian and Holly became my family. Like we ate dinner together each night. Like we would take it in turns, you know, cooking. I'd be like, I'm on like these nights. And I was just, you know, on that single, you know, pursuit to being the best athlete I could be. And, and they were like, yeah, let's like, you know, if any way we can support you. And so they became my family here in Boulder. And um, I look back on those years with such fond memories and yeah, I just stayed on, I think the next, maybe the next year they had a bed frame for me. <laughs> like they definitely made the, made the, um, bedroom much more welcoming. Cause obviously the first year they didn't even you know, know I was coming and I was yeah. only here for a month. So 
yeah, but they really became my family. And so there wasn't much, you know, homesickness because I had my, my teammates and I had Brian and Holly and I was training, I was living my dream. There you go. So, so those early days, when was it that you said, nope, you know what, I'm not going back? Was there a point after 06? I mean, I could fast forward and I know some of the stories, but when did you decide that Boulder was going to be your home, uh, at least for the foreseeable future? I think that um, sort of came to fruition when I met my now husband. Mm -hmm. So in 09, uh, Tim and I started dating. And in 09, you know, I was still, I didn't really, in all those years, even back to like 02, I didn't really have a home. I was kind of, I was in Europe, I was in the US, I was in Australia for a few months. And it was kind of like, you know, I'd stay at my mum's house when I was in Australia. I'd stay at Brian Holly's in in here and I'd stay with the Institute of Sport when I was in, well, the training camp in uh, Europe. And so traveling and being in your suitcase gets old for sure. sure um, and so in 09, Tim and I met and in 2010, he, he bought a townhouse here. And even though we had really only spent like a total of maybe two weeks in person <laughs> together, um, I remember in 2010, I went to California first because Siri had a training camp um, in the desert in uh, Borrego, Borrego Springs yeah. um, <laughs> for a month. I raced Oceanside and then I remember like, driving my car up to Boulder. I'm like, is this weird? I'm driving up and I'm going to just be moving in with this guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, we'd gone on our first date maybe in July the year before. Yes. And I left and went to California in August. And then I went to Kona and then I went to Australia. And he was planning to come out to Australia but never ended up making it. And so uh, I think he came down to California for Oceanside for like three or four days. But yeah, it was like a really short amount of time that I've actually sure. been in person with uh-huh. him and I'm moving in with this guy. So um, I don't think his parents knew <laughs> knew that at the time, <laughs> but it was just, it just made sense and it felt right and it was natural and easy. And yes. um, I didn't, we didn't really think too much about it. It was right. just like, okay, yeah, you move in. Yep, good. Yep, come and stay with me. And then I just remember driving from California, you know, the 17 hour drive or whatever and thinking, like, am I is this really happening? Like, is this the right thing to be doing in this relationship? Like, is this too fast? But it ended up obviously. It, hey, when you know, you know. Exactly. It, it, well, even if you're questioning it, I remember. So I was on a like a run with him, and he said, "Hey, I just started. I'm, I'm on a date. And I said, I'm not gonna tell you who it is. I really said, okay, it was Miranda. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, really? She leaves in two weeks. I said, how's that gonna go? He said, I don't know, but I really like her. And that was kind of I saw the, the taste of it. And this is Tim O'Donnell, right? For those of you that don't know the inside, he's a, also a champion triathlete. He's one of America's best ever, second in Kona, and won in multiple races. And so, but he was on the up. He was on the uptick of his long course career. And then I and I remember I think you roll into town that spring in the Subi, right? You were in a little Impreza. <laughs> yeah. And but it seemed great. So you're North Boulder in a in a townhouse, yep. living with the new guy. Yeah. And is it at that point you're starting to feel at home or what? Yeah. Well, so 09 was my first Kona. And so I was really coming into my own in the sport, uh, yes. racing Ironman for the first time, and I finished second that yeah. year. So it was like a like massive for my career, obviously. And um, yeah, in 20, 2010, we moved in together. And honestly, my season could not have gone better. I think, I, I don't know how many races I've did or won, but I know I, like, it was almost like I couldn't put a step wrong. That's and awesome. I, was, I, won, I won a bunch of races. Tim was doing really well in his um, racing career. And, and then I ended up winning Kona in October too. So um, it was just like a really great time in, in my, my life. I think in, I'd like to say in our lives, sure. um, where, you know, we're getting to know each other, living together and everything just smooth was smooth. I love that. Yes. I remember it very well too, watching from the sidelines and being a part of that. Um, so second place won the Kona, you know, Kona and then won it two more times. Um, you're well into your career. 2013, you guys were married. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. December of 2013. Um, and now Boulder's well into your home. You guys, you moved, you may be in a different place. Actually, you were Palo Park. That's right. You guys were right by the soccer fields, not yep. North Boulder. So uh, Pinedale. Not, I'm a nerd with this, yep. and I like to get it accurate. Very but you, good. So you guys are there living in the townhouse, so on you know on Pinedale by the soccer fields. Now it's like you're married. This is for real. Do you start to think Boulder could be home forever, or is it still just like while we do the sport? No, I think I think it kind of felt like it was going to be home for the foreseeable future, okay. and um, especially once we got married, and it was we we're always kind of like open to. Let's just see. Um, this is our home for a while. We live um, while we're racing professionally, and um, whatever opportunities come post career, we will 
you know, take that into account as to where we'll end up living, but we would love to stay here. Okay. Um, and we're not ruling out even in the future, spending some time in Australia, we would love sure. to go down and um, put when the kids are all in school, or maybe do two years down there or maybe more, who knows, but um, we definitely um, plan to, you know, keep going back and forth to Australia. And then at some point spending a bit of time there and putting the kids through school there just to get that experience as well. Um, but yeah, it, like it sort of, we, also bought some land in North Boulder around 2011, 12 and ended up, you know, by 13, 14, we were talking about building a house. And so that became even more solidified in our decision. Okay. We're building a house. We're building basically our dream house in Boulder and yeah, this is going to be where we live for the foreseeable future. Yes. Dakota Ridge. So now you guys are right there nestled against the foothills, a beautiful spot. Is it still the dream house? Do you still love it? Is it the best? We love it. Um, yeah, it's the best. I mean, we, we go back and forth cause both of us, I grew up on a farm and, um, you know, Tim did not, but he could see the value in raising kids on a couple of acres, um, sure. you know, three, four, five acres, 10 acres, whatever. But we do, you know, we have open space across the road from a house, from a house, and we sort of we have a yard as well, which is nice. When now we have a little Frenchie pup, um, so yeah, I mean, it would be hard to beat. Like it would, but we do, fan, like kind of fantasize about having you know five acres not too far from town. Um, that would you know obviously be the only way we'd move from from there. Yeah. Wow. Awesome stuff. I, I love that. I sort of, I didn't know that. Um, so thank you for sharing. Um, as we, as we talk about, you've seen Boulder from, we'll say 2005 first taste and six, really seven, eight, nine, and now we're 2024. What, what are some of the positive changes or what are some changes that you've seen? If you were just going to call out and say, this is what I love more about Boulder or, or maybe a little bit less. Changes. Uh, honestly, I, I loved it back in five, yeah. six. I mean, I, and I don't know if it's cause you like you go back to like, not your glory days, but you know, those first images of Boulder yeah. and seeing it, obviously it's gotten better in that Tim and I have uh, built a house and we yes. live in our house yes. and we have kids now. And so uh, a lot more of Boulder has opened up to us. Cause mm -hmm. obviously when we're professional athletes, we basically know our home, <laughs> the gym and the trails That's and it. where we go riding. That's so it. now we know soccer and gymnastics and teachers and schools and um, other kids, parents as a whole, another world out there. <laughs> Crazy. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think it just, seems like there's more and more people moving here and I know why, right? Like right. even when I moved here, I sort of felt guilty moving here because even then people were like, ah, oh, yeah, you can come and visit, but don't stay sort of thing. Cause okay. it was almost like this, um, this well-kept secret yes. and it's certainly not a secret anymore. There's a lot of people moving, um, from California, from, from everywhere. Cause it's a, it's a great place to live. Cause it's so, awesome. Yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, I think back to those days, it was, I mean, people complain about traffic, but I mean, I grew up in Brisbane and yeah. not and south side of Brisbane, not so much traffic. And Boulder really might take me an extra three minutes if there's traffic, yeah. you know, like it's nothing compared to what people deal with in the big cities. But yeah, I mean, it's just, there's more people here and I don't love that. Yeah. I kind of like to go back to less. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> less of everything. Um, so yeah, I think that's just, you know, one thing that's changed. Uh, there's a lot, a lot more fake people around fake I feel people. like that's I, it, interesting I, I, mean, I like I like the like I look around and you see the people that like they're hippies and I'm like yes. they're old school bowler and yes. I love like there's athletes like serious athletes and then there was the hippies and now it's just like there's just normal people here there's people. everyone here some everyone. of the hippies are still there believe me I run into them I love them um you just brought there's a perfect segue like I and I, I referenced this earlier you and this is a this is sort of a backhanded compliment to, not no to you it's a compliment to the others is sort of a, a back -end. people win the Ironman World Championship usually they're a little weird in some way or another like they're <laughs> a little bit extreme or excessive or whatever and you I've always said this I I, I think everyone would agree with me here that knows you you are the most bar none the most down to earth world champion, much less three-time world champion, four times, sorry, but three-time Kona winner. So with that, you, you, you know, you just said like, you like real people. And so now what I'm getting at is you're a very real former best in the world. So when you talk about soccer, gymnastics, all the stuff, tell me about now where you see this, you're just, you're just kind of like, you probably bump up next to the moms and the dads. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They just know you're this relatable, awesome, down to earth gal with a couple kids, three of them. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about that experience with Boulder, if that makes sense as a question. Yeah, honestly, it's been 
for, from my experience, um, so far the parents that we've been able to meet and spend time with have been great. Yes. Honestly. Like most yeah. of the parents are, are amazing. It's just, it's just kind of a, you know, I mean, you get some people here and there that are just a bit, bit like they're not happy, like happy, oh. like look, look around. Like that's it. We have a beautiful life. We live in a beautiful place where we are blessed beyond measure. And I like, you know, remember that daily, like for you. what, um, what we've been, well, the opportunities that we have are really endless. And so, yeah, going back to your question on, you know, bumping up against, you know, other parents and stuff, I, it's great. I mean, and you know, sometimes they find out like yeah. later yeah, yeah. <laughs> that they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, oh yes, kind of a lifetime ago. I yeah. used to do triathlon. It used to be my job, but um, yeah, it's kind of um, cool to just meet new people and not have that. Yeah. And I think sometimes you know, when you're in that world as the world champion and you go to triathlons and people just look at you like you're different and I'm, yeah. you're really not any different to anyone else. Yeah. And, you know, even to the point where people like can't speak to you because they're so nervous or right. excited. And, and that's really cool because at some point, you know, that you've inspired them or helped them achieve something. And, and a lot of the time people come up and say, and say things like that, which is, which is wonderful. But I guess the message I'm trying to say is I'm no different to anyone else. I just had a, uh, a great opportunity to go and, uh, you know, fulfill my potential and, and my potential happened to be winning a few world titles. And I think I found what I was supposed to do. And I think everyone has something special that they inside them. It's just a matter of figuring out what that is. That's so cool. What a great perspective. And, and I, yeah, I think that's awesome. And I think that hopefully people hear that because you did find yours and you, you did always have, I think, equilibrium or, or even just harmony, you know, because you were always a normal person and you, I would, I would agree. You are just like me. You're just, you were just better at what you did, but, mm -hmm. but you are just a, a, a normal, you know, human and, and they don't see that those in the sport. So coming to this, like how, Raising kids here. So you have a three month old, little Jameson. You've got um, Finn, who's who's four or three and a half? He's three. Three. Yeah. And then you've got Isabel, and she's going to be seven this summer. So you've got the three kids. What What's it look like raising these three kids in Boulder County? I mean, what's that What's that entail? You know, it's great. There's so many opportunities for them. I, I like get overwhelmed with how many opportunities they have in the summer, yeah. like summer camps. <laughs> like uh, two months ago, other parents were like, I, I'm going to put my kid in this. You should put Izzy in. I'm like, I don't know what we're doing in summer. I, yeah. I, don't, I can't lock down those dates yet. So it's, but it's overwhelming, like not overwhelming in a bad way, overwhelming yeah. in a good way. Like sure. what opportunities? Like I'm putting her in some farm to fork um, so camp for a week where they go and like farm the food and then they go get to cook. Um, That's amazing. Um, and she's six. I mean, or, you six. know. Yeah. Okay. And, and obviously there's, you know, the sports that can put them in soccer. You can put them in, I'm putting him in a basketball camp for, for a few you. days. I'm keeping to my roots Yes, yes. Um, with CU. Uh, but there's so many like go ride your bike, do the, do the biking camp. I know your son does, yeah. does that as well, yeah. which is really cool. But yeah, there's just so many great um, uh, different camps or um, experiences that you can put your kids through um, all right here. Very and cool. we yeah. have, I mean, last year I put her in um, a nature camp, what it was called. Um, I can't remember. It was up. Um, was that the Gold Hill or was it? No, Thorn or up no? A, not Thorn. It was a different one. I can't think of the name of yeah. it, but it was just basically up the mountain and they yeah. basically just did outside stuff. They so did cool. art with leaves and sticks and, yeah. uh, you know, she. I think she did three days a week for two weeks. Um, so, no, you know, I don't like to put her in too many activities because we, we like to spend time with our kids and do things yeah. with them ourselves. And we end up traveling a fair amount. We will travel and we just got a camper this past year. So we will be doing a lot of camping trips and stuff too. So, yeah, just, um, yeah, I think I growing up, I mean, I don't know if it's a, an American thing that there's summer camp situation I or I mean we never did anything I mean we didn't have much money either but we're like we just hung out at home totally in the summertime yeah I know I think about I a hundred percent we were the same it, it, summertime you just goof off yeah um which I will put a plug for if you want to look into this one of the ones called be wild uh for for Isabel because they ride their bike they basically do what we did they ride around they play in the creeks yeah. and they they have lunch outside and they basically just do it's like a guided um summer as you would just see being free in, in town and you get all over Boulder uh, on bike paths. So, yeah. which is exactly what we would do with our kids on days off, it, right? Like, exactly. so it's just like, okay, I've got to work. Yeah. Um, but I want you to be outside. I want you yeah. to go and have an experience and be totally. with some other kids. And so, you know, it's a great way to get them active out there. For sure. For sure. And so, okay, coming right off of that as you, and this was one that I like to ask is, um, 
Well, first off, we'll, we'll do this. What about a tip? Some, if you one or two tips, someone that's moving to Boulder, they don't know the area. What's a tip? Welcome to town. Here's what I would advise you. Wish I knew this when I moved here. That kind of thing. Does anything come to mind? Yeah, that's a good question, Mike. Um, there's probably like a million tips yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over the years, right? Um, I don't know. I I I love North Boulder area. Yeah. I think that's kind of the best place to live. And I've really only lived in North Boulder. I haven't lived down in the thick of it. But yeah. I felt like if you're active, that's the best place to live because okay. you kind of easy access to the trails. You're easy yeah. access to ride your bike. You're easy access to, you know, go ride up the mountains and so forth. Um, so yeah, if you're a triathlete or someone who's active and want to come to Boulder and have easy access to the trails, I would, I would suggest North of Iris, okay. um, cool. living there. Uh, but you really couldn't go wrong in the vicinity, vicinity of, of yeah. Boulder because there's just, it's an easy place to get around. Everywhere and, you go. I know that's yeah. true. Okay. Nice. And then what about your, we'll, we'll come in here and we'll say just North Boulder where your Dakota Ridge area, it doesn't have to be there, but what, if you were going to just going to say, Hey, you know what? Invite, invite me and Amanda over, invite some friends over. You're going to go out for a coffee, maybe around, you don't drink coffee, yeah. a beer or a wine, or where would you go out for something social, a coffee date and lunch, maybe something like that. What are those favorite spots okay. for you? Um, I think my favorite dinner places are Oak okay, and Corita. Okay. I think, I think Corita. I mean, I love Bobby's Frasca and uh, I don't even know Alberto Pizza oh, is now. Uh, Alberico, I think it's Alberico, called. Alberico, yeah. Alberico. yeah. Um, but I haven't been there in a long time. I, you know, we tend to be going to like the kitchen or uh, the best place for brunch on a, on the weekend is Jill's. Okay. Um, St. Julian. All right. They have a really good, really good spread. So I think that's the best brunch for the weekend. Um, for a coffee, again, I don't really drink coffee, but I always like to go down to Boxcar. Nice. Um, yeah. Is, is it still called Boxcar? It is, right on Pearl. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So Boxcar and Dell. It used to be next to Cured, but now yeah. it's whichever it's called. I can't keep track of its name either. I know. Yeah. So it used to be Cured, but in there they usually have sandwiches and stuff, That's which right. is pretty awesome. Very cool. Um, okay. Yeah. So you're talking Jill's, you're talking Corita. We've heard that before with the views. And then Oak at 14th and, and Pearl. Great stuff. And and Jill's is a, is unique because I think a lot of people think of it. It's in the hotel. I love those tips. Um I'm going to, I actually haven't, it's been too long. I'm going to go to Jill's. You just put that on my, reg, on my radar. Sweet cow for ice cream. Tell us more about sweet cow before I ask the next question. The best flavor, Michael? What do you think? Well, uh, I, sometimes I just can't stay away from cookies and cream oh, because it's always on so the menu. good. Yeah. But like, I'm also kind of, I'm a cookie freak. So. The best flavor I think is Nutella. Nutella. And it's very rarely on the menu. I don't know why it should be a staple. Should be a regular. But whenever it's on there, we get a couple of quarts. Okay, a couple of quarts. Yep. I like it. I like <laughs> Put it. Put them in the fridge yeah. to last us till the next yes. one. Anyone that brings up Sweet Cow, definitely someone that I love. <laughs> um, yeah, there's two. There's also South Boulder. We hit the South Boulder one sometimes just because the kids come out of school. We roll down that way and get a little change of scenery. Um, and Louisville. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's do this. Describe for us what you would kind of, how you would plan an ideal Saturday or Sunday. So you wake up, you just got your, you got anything you want to do, family, no family exercise, no exercise, food, whatever it is. How's a, how's a weekend day look for you here in, in Boulder? Um, well, my ideal um, weekday weekend is just spending time with the family. Right now it's a little hard because with a six-year-old and an infant. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the days where that infant's about three. Sure. And we can go out and do a hike or yeah. all together. I mean, obviously now I can I can carry him in in the carrier, but yeah, um, yeah, just fa honestly, it's just all about family for us on the weekends. Um, usually Tim gets out and exercises a little Saturday morning. Sunday morning we make waffles or pancakes or whatever okay. and bacon, and um, usually I also exercise. So I know sometimes usually Tim makes the pancakes and waffles, and I go for a run. Okay. Um, so just getting out, doing a little bit of exercise in the morning um, for, yeah. you know, sanity and vanity. Sanity like and vanity. Say. There you go. Um, and then it's just family time. Yeah. So whether that's in the summertime, we might go to um, Scott Carpenter, the pool, mm -hmm. uh, or we might just hang out an hour. We've got a, we've got a master spa, a hot yeah. tub in our backyard, which is awesome. Or going on a hike with the kids or, you know, 
doing some other activity, riding bikes or something like Perfect. that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Family, outdoor, some exercise. And then you, you kind of made me think of this for you, uh, Outside of, I know you do commentary for Ironman and for various triathlons and you, you travel a bit for that. You do some of that here. What other stuff do you do kind of just on a daily kind of earn earn the dollars, you know, pay the bills kind of stuff? Anything that you want to share with, with us about that? Yeah. So once I transitioned from racing, it was kind of a matter of, okay, what do I want to put my energy into now? And obviously my major focus is the kids. Right. Like being able to be a present yeah, a parent and, and at home. And I am basically at home all the time, but I do, I did want to have something else that I could put my energy into. And yes, I do a little bit of commentary, uh, but my other passion is coaching. Yes. So I'm coaching triathlon. Um, Tim and I started Salty Bears, uh, which is our coaching group and we're coaching. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one clients and we also have a, a team as well that we've built. Um, and yeah, so that's our, um, way to stay in the sport and also give back as well with yeah. things that we've learned and help people along their journeys now to try and be the best versions of themselves. So, um, yeah, it's, it's coaching, but it's also sort of mentoring as well. Nice. Um, so yeah, we've, we're both really enjoying that and I get, you know, obviously I'm flexible on my hours with that. Yeah. So, um, That's major great. goal, major focus is the kids, but, um, being able to keep my you know, use my passion for the sport, um, in other ways. Very good. It's really fun. Well, I'm sure you're excellent at that. I loved, I love having you whenever I watch you or, or share a, a, you know, a show with you, you're so good at the commentary. The coaching has got to be the same. What does that mean? Salty bear? I just need to know more. Salty what that so Tim and I were sort of brainstorming mostly Tim, um, on, you know, what we, what we could call our group. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well it needs to be something from you and something from me. And he's like, well, I'm the Navy uh, guy. Yeah. So um, that's the salty part. Gotcha. And then he, you know, people think of me, they think of running. I'm like, that's kind of boring. Um, <laughs> and then he's like, what about a koala? And then we sort of like, okay, an so, uh, anchor in a koala. And then we just came up with salty bears. That's so good. Um, what a little so story. Yeah. That's our, that's our little logo is really cute. It's a little koala sitting on a <laughs> sitting on an anchor. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Well, check that off to look more into that. I saw you guys announce it. It's pretty cool. And what a great set of mentors to have you two uh, behind the wheel with you. So um, super stuff. Okay, last little bit. Just tell us this. You gave us your restaurants, but what's your if you had your favorite outdoor hike, run, wherever it is, what's the best trail in all of Boulder County that you think you should hit? Somebody has to know about it. Where do oh, you love gosh. to be? Uh, I mean, Sanitas is a an old favorite, but I last year did the Skyline Traverse. And oh. if you have the time and the ability, which most people I think do, it's about a seven, eight hour hike, but it basically goes from way down South Boulder and finishes at Sanitas. And it's, I think, 30 kilometers, but you hit a lot of really cool trails and um, peaks. And um, I mean, honestly, I, as a professional triathlete, stuck to my Wonderland Lake and yeah the res and, you know, um, Eagle trail, you know, sure. like I just knew what I needed to do to get That's to right. a certain level of fitness. And so mm -hmm. I just did the same runs over and over and over again, but there is a whole world of, uh, trails out there, like bear peak. I don't even know what they were all called. Bear, yeah. Oh, uh, right. South Boulder, bear peak, bear peak. Green, yep. Flagstaff, Sanitas, the five that go in that Skyline Traverse. And yep. wow, that's so cool. Um, good suggestion. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I, love, I loved it. And, you know, it was a long day on the legs, but we started super early and we were done by lunchtime. So it's, a, it's super. some beautiful hiking out there. Very cool stuff. Well, I love it. I think with that, I, I do want to offer you the opportunity if there's anything. Well, well I want to offer you the opportunity to anything you want to add that you overlooked that I didn't ask and I was supposed to. And in that, as you think about that, you also, this is something I keep forgetting I want to add, is who would you suggest if we were going to have one more guest on our show or the next guest or one of our future guests, who do we have to hear about their story and their interaction with Boulder? Well, you definitely have to hear from my husband, Tim O'Donnell. That's Tim a no-brainer. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so put him on the list. He's um, on the list. He'll probably have a completely different story uh, as to how we met and like this girl just moved right in. Um, <laughs> I had the door locked. Yeah, yeah. Somehow knew the code. Um, but yeah, I think he has a, he has a great story and, you know, obviously mm -hmm. and everything that he's done. For sure. Um, who else? Richie Cunningham would be a great one. Oh my gosh. Not that the guy, guy from Happy Days. He, yes. <laughs> he he looks like the guy from Happy Days. Yes. That's where he got his name. His name's actually Craig Cunningham. I love it. She shared that right off the bat. <laughs> yep. Craig um, Cunningham. Yeah. He's, you know, from the good old days. And 
you know, they don't live here anymore, but the Bennett's would have been good to get on here. But yeah, they're not here anymore. So that didn't think do, they count. We'll do a, yeah, that's true. He left, but it still would be interesting. Good suggestions. I'm going to write them down because I like to have a master list and, and that's why we do this. So, um, what about Dave Scott? Have you had him on? He's on my list. He's yeah. ducking me, but yeah, he's going to get on here. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause just again, thinking about when you moved here, how long ago, how much changed since the man moved here. Yeah. Um, but I'm writing these notes down and then awesome. Well, thank you so much. I, I think that's really it. Unless you have something else you wanted to add. I think we got most of it. We yeah. covered it all. Yeah. So here's the thing, folks. Everybody, on March 26th, wish, wish uh, Rennie a happy birthday. Um, and do that either via Salty Bears, find her via us here, you know, whatever it is. But I'd love you guys to share the podcast and share Rennie's great story. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with us. It's a pleasure to learn more about your story. And uh, so thank you. Thank you, Michael. And yeah, if you want to check us out, uh, timandrini.com if you want to become a salty bear if you're a triathlete. Otherwise, I'm on Instagram too, and you'll catch me probably with Michael in some of the broadcasts as well with Ironman. That's right. And at Scott Carpenter Pool. I was running to you and your kids there. So looking forward to summertime. Folks, thank you so much. This has been another great conversation about Boulder County. And until the next one, I would encourage you guys to go out there and do something that you love.